Exactly. Okay, so let's go through it. I, I want to know straight from straight from the champ's mouth. Let's do some fight predictions. What do you say? Uh, first up, no, we got, no. we got uh, in May. We got Canelo versus Munguia. Let's start there. Um, uh, I think Canelo's going to win, but to be honest, Munguia, you know, Munguia's young. He does have a lot of experience. I feel like Canelo is kind of on his way out. Uh, he has like sixty pro fights, so you know, it's sixty training caps, sixty weight cuts. But, you know, I think he does have the experience to be uh, Jaime. But, you know, I still see, I feel like at this point, whoever Canelo fights 50 50 because he's kind of on his way out. But wow. I'll go Canelo. You go Canelo? Okay. What about uh, Inoue and Yuri? I'm going to be honest. Uh, I don't even, all right, I've watched that full fight once when he fought Fulton. And he just mad, like, he beat this crap out of him. You know what I mean? So. I'm going to go with the Japanese guy you said first. He's dangerous. He's good. That's a good choice. I'm with you. I'm with you. Hard sell. Okay. We got, we got Lomachenko and Kambosos Jr. Who do you got for that? Uh, I don't know. I think I'm going go with Kambosos. Uh, Kambo Is that his name? Kambosos. Kambosos. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think oh. I'm going to go with him. Over Loma. Why? Do you think Loma's washed up? What's up? Not that he's washed, but you know he's kind of old. He's he's had a couple fights as well. You know what I mean? Uh, okay. He's still uh, young. Still young. I think we're gonna see Lomachenko Ukrainian dance his ass around Kambosos, but that's I just mean, it, me. It's very possible. Very very possible. But if I were to bet money, I'm going with Kambosos. Okay, got. It. Let's go north of six feet now to Usek versus Fury. Who do you got for that? Um, I'm going to go with Fury because Fury's 6'7", 300 pounds. And uh, he's, fought, he's fought Wilder. I mean, I know Wilder's a little bit smaller, but I don't know Wilder. He beat Wilder twice, and Wilder's no you know, pushover. I don't think I don't think Usyk could beat Wilder even. So mm. that'd, be good. that'd be a better fight to watch because damn Fury's going to outbox the crap up. I think Fury's going to outbox the crap up. Yeah, and Fury looks like he's in way better shape than he was against uh, Nganu. I don't think he took that fight seriously. I've actually never I've seen him look I, worse. I think I think they were friends. And he got him the fight, and then and then he got him to fight Joshua, and now he had like two of the biggest paydays of his life. I mean, yeah, his life has changed forever for sure for the for the financial best. Um, yeah. Berbia versus Bivol. I'm gonna go with. Bivol because I really like Bivol. I think he's really good, really talented. He's mm. a great style, and I feel like, um, bet I mean, better he's really strong, really tough. But I think he's gonna have to do a little bit more defense. You know what I mean? Because I think Bivol could just keep him right there all day. So I'm gonna go with Bivol. I'm with you on that one. Amazing. Okay, and then we 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 touched on Zhang versus Wilder. You had Wilder for that. Zhang just fought. He lost to Parker, huh? He lost uh, to Parker. No, I'm good. I'm going to go as Wilder on that one. No, Wilder's going to fight um, Jared Anderson, no? In L.A. Oh, he's going to fight Zang first? Yeah, he's got oh, Zang. Okay. I'm going to go, I'm gonna go with uh, uh, Wilder. Wilder? Yeah. Okay. And then, you know, just curious, because while we're on the topic of fight predictions, out of the MMA shit show world, we have Diaz versus Masvidal. Do you care, and do you have a prediction? I like them both, to be honest. You know, I like them both. Okay. I, I, I like I like Diaz because you know he's crazy. He'll he's crazy as hell. So, but uh, I, I like to see Diaz win because he's. Uh, I like to see him win because you know I want to see uh, someone from the West Coast win. Cool, I love it. Okay, thanks for that. So back to you. Um, I, now I understand that you are also you're making some business moves outside of the ring. You got some other things cooking. Uh, do you care to tell us more about that? Like what? Well, uh, rumor is that you're starting a promotion. Um, we're getting into it. We'll see what happens. Cool. Okay. I think it's, I personally, I think it's really wicked when fighters start making like some good business decisions outside of just their boxing careers. I think that it's so important to have that to lean against, you know, alongside your career and to build that. So if you are getting into the promoting, I wish you also the best of success with that. Thank um, you very much. Yeah, it's a big world. Go, go, go make moves in it. Um, we're going to get something big going. Good, good. Well, I'd love to hear it. 
And um, we'll check in on, on the future successes of, of your family okay. there. I'd love to see it. Uh, okay, so what, what advice I'm curious would you give to, you know, a young, a young amateur looking to turn pro, you know, going through what yeah. you've been through? What would you say to them? I'd probably say, all right, I'd say you got to learn the basics. You got to learn the strong medals. You got to learn how, all right, you got to learn how to fight behind the jab. All right, amateur, I'd stay amateur as long as you can. Learn to fight behind the jab. And then if you look on turning pro, I would wait. I'd wait till you're at least 18 years old. Don't go to Mexico because you see a lot of idiots go to Mexico, right? And you get, you, you see a lot of idiots go to Mexico and fight Mexico opponents and uh, go out of your pocket, right? And lose money rather than, you know, you could fight the same opponent in the United States and get paid a couple bucks for it. So mm. I would not go to Mexico. The only reason I went because I was 16 years old. Mm. So then I would not go to Mexico and I would fight as often as possible and fight, you know, the best opponents you can to make yourself better. Mm. That was the best advice I could give because awesome. I don't know, I see a lot of, see a lot of foolish, foolish mistakes. Mm. And people always ask, people always ask me like, oh, how do you do it? Well, you know, we kind of took the hard route. Right, right. Um, again, you did have a you did have a short amateur career. What was the the, the kind of grand design uh, behind that, or was it was just wanted to make the most out of your your younger years? What was it? So what happened was I had about thirty four amateur fights. I had won a couple nationals. I remember when I had first went to nationals, I'd lost. Uh, you know, I was losing to to I lost like four of the same kids, and then I had I got a little bit older, got a little bit better, started beating up. And then I had my son when I was 16 years old. So then it was either finish a job, uh, finish school, get a job, or, you know, try to finish school and turn pro. So mm -hmm. I, I tried to finish school, I turned pro, and then um, it worked out really well for me. Uh, my parents helped me out. My dad was hustling for sponsors. And then, you know, we just kind of, you know, took it one one fight at a time, and then we blew mm. up. You know, it, it was great, but what? yeah, that's why my amateur my amateur didn't last too long because I did about sixteen. Right. Was there a point during that time? Like that must have been difficult. You know, uh, was there a point in that time that you almost thought about quitting boxing? No, not at all. I never, I never thought about quitting boxing. Uh, yeah. Well, COVID hit, and then. You know, we we're in COVID for about, you know, a couple months. So then I opted out, like, we we're just able to just chill and not do nothing. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. then as soon as COVID was over with, you know, I think I was already 18. So then before I started fighting in the States. And then I was making, I was making more money than I usually would because I was selling, well, my dad was selling like $20,000 worth of tickets and, mm -hmm. you know, we get a percentage out of that. So, you know, things were, and all that, but he was hustling for sponsors. So, you know, I, I was getting, all right money for an 18 year old mm -hmm. yeah that that hustle for you know marketing yourself and sponsorship is a huge part of the game especially i think when you're you know in the early stages um how important do you think you know it is to have like a social media presence and you know not necessarily going as far as ryan garcia but like yeah. do you do you think it's important for fighters to engage in that well to be honest <laughs> i never thought it did until like, you know, maybe the past year because, you know, if sponsors see you with such a big, you know, as an influence, you know, then they're going to want you to promote their stuff. And then, you know, because you get all these followers, of course, and then, you know, the more, I honestly think, you know, the more followers are better because you have more opportunities to get bigger, better sponsors. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's always, that's always really good. Not all that, but, you know, you want people to know who you are. Because you don't want to be, you know, 17 and 0, and then nobody knows who you are. I mean, I feel, I feel like yeah. that's embarrassing. So, you yeah. know, that's important. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it sounds like your, you know, your dad really has a, um, a great drive and a great kind of vision for, you know, what he needs to be doing in the background to help push. So you guys seem like a really, like a really strong team. Oh, we're very strong. I mean, my dad's fought before, you know, so that's... He, get, he gets it. Good. He gets it, and you know, not that, but you know, when I had my kid, we had talked, we had sat down and talked, and he was like, "Well, by the time you're 21, if you're not, you know, in the direction you want to be seeing you in, then I'm not going to coach you anymore. You can still fight, do whatever you want. It's uh, best if you get a job and you no know, start worrying about providing to your family." But 19 years old, I beat Vidal 
And so I told him, you know, you're going to be training me just a little bit longer. So that's so cool. I mean, what a, what a big moment for you as a father and son to kind of have like, re- you know, like a tough love, like a real talk moment like that. And do you think that that conversation and its rawness, like really helped drive you to that victory at 19? Oh yeah. hundred percent. You know, if I would have lost that fight, probably wouldn't even be fighting, but you know, we, we've always had, you know, tough love like that. And that's, uh, that's why I am who I am today. And, uh, you no, know, you treated me like that. And they, oh, I mean, I was kind of, you know, knucklehead, but, you know, it, my brothers, you know, saw the way he treated me for you know, acting foolish. And then, you know, they kind of learned from it, you know, like they didn't mm-hmm. want to be treated the same way. But, you know, he's a great dad. He's helped me out plenty. He's helped me out a lot. He's still helping me out, you know, whenever I need some lots of kids. My dad's there to watch it. Nah, that's, uh, I, I, I love it. On this. I love the teamwork. Though. Way to go, mom, mom, the young son hero, the babysitter. Yeah. Um, yeah. What's next? Like, do you, do you guys have a, any fights, conversations in the works? What's next for you in your camp? Uh, June 15th, we're going to be in, in Vegas on the Tank Davis Benavides. That's what we'll be fighting. So, we got about yeah. seven weeks. Seven weeks. Uh, that's why I took, you know, well, I had a commercial to shoot out there in uh, California. But, uh, you know, since we're out there, I took the kids to Disneyland. I took my wife out there and uh, we had a good time. She was able to see her family because she's from California. Mm. And uh, uh, it was a good time. But now, you know, tomorrow we start camp and, uh, you know, it's time to get back to work. And how does the initial phase of camp look for you? Um, what kind of stuff are you guys prioritizing at the beginning? Uh, the beginning is mostly well. To, I since my last, you know, way or my last camp, you know, I've kind of stayed really in shape. Uh, so you know, I was usually I get a little heavy and really got to work on my weight. But you know, yeah. past couple fights, I've been keeping my weight down, running, uh, you know, staying light, staying you know somewhat in shape. So when it's time to start training, you know, I get the groove back really quick. But usually, be prior. Uh, we usually, you know, stay focused on uh, my strength and conditioning and, you know, my technique. But, you know, overall camp, I train two to three times a day. I have a nutritionist. Uh, my mom is my cook. So, you know, she makes all my food for me, uh, whatever the nutritionist needs, because my mom has to weigh everything out, uh, mm-hmm. get certain ingredients, stuff like that. And then uh, I have lots of doctor's appointments. A lot of people don't know that, but, you know, it takes a lot of uh mental strength uh you know taking care of your mental you know so i have mental doctors that help me out hmm. and then i have chiropractors and, and stuff like that so it's not all about you know just boxing 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 uh it's, it's, it's a lot of mental work doctor work and uh strength and conditioning i love that i love that kind of holistic approach it really sounds like you guys have such a dynamite you know yeah. approach to your your training and your whole team behind you is just really impressive and and the fact you guys are family I think that's just I think that's just wicked so you know um we Uh, we look forward to seeing you on that that undercard and and we totally look forward to seeing you know how your camp Mm -hmm. progresses and all the success in your future and I believe there's there's going to be lots of it yeah I appreciate your time tonight I think so you know thanks to the family for allowing you to step away from from the busyness and and spend some time chatting with us yeah of course it was fun I enjoyed it it was uh I don't really like doing interviews and stuff like that, but this one was pretty chill. I, I would do it with you again. Awesome. Well, we'll definitely have. We'll, we'd love to chat with you after after your next fight. Perfect. And then you and I can then you and I can bet on the next you know ten fights in the in the calendar. Yeah. Perfect. And if no, I the win, only disagreement we had the only disagreement we had was Cambosos, right? True. True. Uh, if I win, I want Dad to make me a cortado. All right. If you win, deal. what do you want? I win. I'll take another one. Okay, okay. <laughs> but okay, I'm, Dad has to make it, not me. <laughs> yeah, okay. Sounds good. Thanks so much for joining us. It's been a pleasure to get to know you, Eli. I wish you all the best, all the success from Empire. Sounds good. Appreciate it, guys. Make sure to listen, follow, and subscribe to Empire Boxing on Apple, Spotify, and YouTube.